Well, despite scoring two goals in Japan's opening two matches of the tournament, Samurai Blue fans are concerned their superstar, Keisuke Honda, could be suffering from a crisis of confidence. Last night against Iraq, he converted from the penalty spot in what turned out to be the winning goal, but he butchered a host of other chances he'd normally score in his sleep. After the match, Honda claimed his side won't win the big matches if he misses chances like that. I am happy to make to make uh, three chances, but of course I have to I have to score. Yeah, I need. Uh, I have to, yeah I have to do reflection yeah about that. China coach Alain Perrin is bracing for a difficult quarterfinal after qualifying at the top of Group B. His team will face either South Korea or Australia, depending on the result of tonight's game in Brisbane, and he doesn't have an ideal opponent. Australia at home is difficult because they score a lot of goals and are very impressive, and Korea every time is a good team. I've seen they've played with two teams for those two games. So for us, it was a big challenge, uh, both of teams. Oman manager Paul Le Guin remains proud of his team. Despite losing the first two matches of the tournament, they'll go into tonight's match against Kuwait, hoping to end their Asian Cup on a high. We try our best, but uh, you know, it's not easy when you arrive and you play against South Korea. We did quite well. And uh, against Australia, we are favourites of the tournament. So it is not a shame to be beaten. It is not a shame, but uh, we have to try the, to, to, to win the last game. And we love a bit of positivity at the Asian Cup. Palestine have conceded nine goals in their two games so far at the tournament, but they're not giving up hope of qualifying for the knockout stages. Here's a tweet from Football Palestine today. They are pushing for an 11-goal victory over Iraq in their final group match on Tuesday. Clearly, their glass is half full. Back to you, Adam.